Hey everybody, uh, this lesson is area of other kinds of polygons. So we're gonna, uh, we've done rectangles and squares. A square is just a rectangle. Uh, triangles, we've done uh, uh, parallelograms, trapezoids, and, and rhombi, rhombuses, okay? So here we're gonna do uh, the same stuff, except we're gonna uh, uh, make them into smaller figures and then add and subtract them. So how can we find the area of a polygon by breaking it into simpler shapes, okay? so. A tangram. I've never heard of a tangram. Okay, a tangram is a square unit that is divided up into smaller shapes. So here we have a tangram, a square. The area of the smaller square right here is one, and so one square unit right there. So we're going to put a one right there and use the tangram to find uh, find the area of each of the other tangram pieces. That should be area right there. Golly, I've already made a mistake right off the bat that's all right that shouldn't be too bad okay so let's go ahead and um, uh, follow the, the beginning directions i'm going to change it up a little bit here because um, to me it makes more sense what uh, uh, than what the book's doing here so anyway place one large triangle on top of the uh, other large triangle and what is true about the two triangles and so what does this mean okay so if i took like this triangle right here and then let's just slide it out right here okay and then if i could just um, uh, rotate it up and then look how it would just slide right on top of that guy right there. You see that right there? Okay, so that they, um, they're congruent right there, so they have equal areas right there. Okay, uh, and so place the two smaller triangles on top of the square. What is the area of each of the smaller triangles? So here's the two large triangles. We have, we, oops, I'm sorry, you can't see that. Here's the two large triangles right here. Here's the two small triangles, and we'll call this one the medium triangle. We'll call this one the parallelogram. Okay, so they want us to tr uh, uh, put the two smaller triangles on top of the square. Okay, so if we did that, let's see, I'm just going to slide this guy right here. And then, I don't know if you can see that if I if I just took that guy and then, um, and then slid it upside down, and then it would fit right underneath right there. So each of these two small triangles makes up the the whole square right there okay can you see that right there okay so what um, uh, so what is the area of each of the small triangles well okay so if um, uh, if if the big um, square not the big square the little square is one then each of those triangles have to be one half so a half of a square unit okay so each of those little triangles are half of a square unit so let's go ahead and put those in there Okay, and then if we arrange uh, the square and one of the small triangles to look like this, what's the combined area? Okay, well, the combined area would be this one plus one half, and it would get us one and a half square units. Okay, all right, now watch. If we took this parallelogram right here, did I make that parallelogram? And if we tilted it up, okay, I think, or maybe it's going to go up like, you'll see, just a second. So if we tilt it up like that, Okay, and then put one of the small triangles next to it. Can you see that that uh, this figure with the triangle and the parallelogram is the same shape together with this figure right here, the square and the triangle right here? Well, if we took out these triangles right here, then that would mean that this square and this parallelogram have the same shape, okay? All right, so um, that's what that's going to tell us is that um, that means that the parallelogram and that uh, square has the same area right there. So let's go ahead and put a one in for the parallelogram right there, okay? All right, let's keep doing this, you guys. Let's complete the rest of the diagram by filling in the remaining areas and explain how we got it. Okay, so I'm just gonna fool around here for a little bit. Let's talk about uh, uh, this medium triangle right here, okay? So if I took, uh, let's see, am I doing that first? Yeah, so if I, if I took um, uh, uh, one of these little triangles out right here, and then, um, and if I could put it, um, I don't want to do that. If I could slide it right down here, okay. Um, let's see. And then it's going to go right in here, okay. Can you see that that this guy right here? If I took this guy right here, it would also slide right down into that position right there. Sorry, it's behind the fact right there. I'll make it in the front here. So, um, so these two little small triangles makes up one of the medium triangles. Okay, so that what that means, you guys, is is um, uh, is that um, uh, since each small triangle is a half, then that medium triangle must be one. So I put a one inside of there. 
All right, and then um, now if we took this medium triangle and then um, uh, put it into this position right here, I'm going to put it uh, right in. Now I'm going to do it like this. So I'm going to put it right in right there and slide it right up there. Can you see the medium triangle? The big triangle is two of the medium triangles right there. Okay, so if the big triangle is two of the medium triangles, okay, so see, can you see this medium triangle and this medium triangle? So this big triangle is two of those mediums. So each one of them must be one. So the whole big triangle must be two right there. Okay, so let's go ahead and put a two inside of there. Okay, let's, now it didn't ask us this in our book, but what's, what's the area of the whole square? Okay, well, there's a couple ways you can do that. You can add up all these numbers. Or you can recognize that half the square is over here, which is 2 plus 2 or 4. So the other half must be 4 also. So together, it's going to be 8 square units for all those together. Okay. All right. So we can find the area of polygons by breaking the polygons into smaller shapes. And then we can apply the areas of our formulas that we already know, like rectangles and squares and triangles and all that stuff. So here we go. Let's find the area of each polygon. Okay. So far on this one here, there's a couple of ways to do this, you guys. I think the easiest way is to draw a horizontal line segment right here, okay, and it's going to cut it up into a rectangle on the bottom and a triangle on top, okay, so right there, and then so what we can do now is find the area of the rectangle, so the rectangle, here's the base, 16, here's the height, 7, so base times height for a rectangle, is going to be 16 times 7, which is um, uh, 16 is 10 plus 6. Remember this trick? And then if we distribute uh, the 7 through, so 7 times 10 is 70. 7 times 6 is 42. So 70 plus 42. Well, I know 7 plus 4 is 11. So 70 plus 40 is 110. So add the 2, so we get 102 um, uh, square centimeters. All right, now let's find the area of, um, I just slid that out, the area of that triangle up on top, okay? So, so the base right here, you guys, remember the area of a triangle is 1 half base times the height right there. So this base, you guys, since the whole thing is 16 and take off this 8 right here, so this must be 16 minus 8. And similarly, if this whole side is 13, take off this side piece right here, this little piece is going to be 13 minus 7, which is going to be uh, 6, okay? So uh, there's the base, there's the height, and then the area is 1 half base times height, and so we get 24 square centimeters. And so the total area is we're going to add those two numbers together, 112 plus 24, and it gets us 136 square centimeters, okay? That was called the addition method, and then um, we just did this in my Integrated Math 1 class, and so uh, this one we're going to do what's called the surround and subtract method here. Now, you could do the addition method. I could cut this up into rectangles right here. I could do the same thing, but I want to show you a different method because it's more helpful on some other ones you'll see in just a minute. So we could cut it right here. I'm not going to. What I'm going to do is extend this over and extend this down and get a big square, okay? So extend the top and the, and the, and the right-hand side to make a big square of 60 by 60, okay? So do you see this big square right here? Okay, so I can get the area of this square, which is 60 times 60, and subtract off the area of this little uh, rectangle right here, okay? Which is going to be, this is the base, which is... Uh, uh, 60 minus 20, so this would be 40, and then this would be over here, this would be 60 minus this 30, so this would be 30 right there. Okay, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. So the area of the entire square is 3,600 square feet right there. Now, your book made a mistake, at least the teacher's edition that I have, they wrote 360. That's not true. 6 times 6 is 36. 6 times 6 is 36, so if I add these two zeros, it's 3,600. All right, so your textbook, uh, you awesome teachers, it says 360. At least mine did, my teacher's edition, so just be careful right there. They made a mistake. Textbooks make errors all the time, just like you and I do. I make mistakes all the time. You see that all the time with me. Okay, let's find the area of the missing rectangle, okay? So the area of this rectangle is base times height, so this base is 40, this height is 30, Okay, so uh, the base is the, the 60 minus the 20 little piece on top, 
and the height is the 60 minus the 30 piece on the right. So 30 times 40 gets me 1,200 or 1,200. So um, we take the entire square and we subtract off that little rectangle right there. So we get 2,400 right there. All right. Okay. So describe another way we could have found the area in, in section B. Well, we talked about it. We could have cut it up into two rectangles right there like I did right there. So the top uh, rectangle is going to be 30 times 20. 600 and then the, the bottom uh, rectangle is still uh, 60 times 30 which is going to be uh, it's going to be um, so ooh, I almost did a brain freeze right there it's this 60 right here 60 times 30 right there so it's 1800 so 600 plus 1800 is the same answer that we got in the last part which is 2400 or 2400 okay let's do that with these guys right here okay so for number three I think it's easiest to cut them up into two rectangles right there do you see those two rectangles so 8 times 4 and then 6 times 2 and then we add those together 32 plus 12 is 44 square meters Okay, on this next one, I would totally do the surround and subtract method. I draw that line on top and do the big rectangle and take out that little right triangle right there. Okay, now if, um, if, if this whole piece is 36, then this is going to be 36 minus 18, which is 18. Okay, so it's going to be the rectangle here minus this uh, triangle right here. Just remember, triangles are one-half base times height. So I get uh, right here, um, base times height, and I'm just saving time, you guys. 36 times 18 is 648, and then 1 half 9 times 18 is 81. 648 minus 81 gets us 5. 167 square inches okay all right so we can apply the technique of dividing shapes into smaller shapes in problems that involve finding area like this guy right here so the diagram shows the shape of the dimensions of Teresa's rose garden so the first part is they want us to find the area of the garden so what I'm going to do is draw this horizontal line right here and then I got this rectangle on top which is 15 by 9 and this rectangle on bottom which is 24 by, this is 9, because the whole top is, the whole side is 18. So if I take off the 9, this is 9 right here. So we're just going to add these together. So 9 times 15, 9 times 24. I think I did that right there. Yeah, so 15 is 10 plus 5. 24 is 20 plus 4. So 9 times 10 is 90. And then 9 times 5 is 45. 90 plus 45. 9 times 2 is 18. So 9 times 20 is uh, 180 plus 18 so we get 198 when we do that okay and then uh, uh, did I say 198 300 uh, 216 right there sorry about that um, and then we're gonna add those together right there so let's add them together and we get um, 351 square feet that's what Teresa's uh, garden is all right so the second part is dealing with Teresa's garden which is 351 square feet and we're going to put mulch in her garden so one bag of mulch covers 12 square feet so how many bags will she need well we remember there's 351 total square feet so we take that and divide it by the 12 square feet and we get um, a little bit less than 30. Okay, so how many bags is she going to need? Well, she can't buy a 2.25 of a bag, so she'll have to get 30 bags all together right there. Okay, all right, so here, this diagram shows the floor plans of a hotel lobby. The carpet costs $3 per square foot. How much will it cost the carpet to lobby? Okay, so we got to find the area first. All right, can you see that this is a trapezoid? The top piece is a trapezoid right here. This parallel side and this parallel side are the bases. Okay, and the height right here, the height is the same as this height right here. So 15.5. Okay, so they're just two tra trapezoids right there. And so the area of one trapezoid, there's our formula for one of them. And so since we have two of them, you guys, we can just knock off the half part and do the area for both of them together. So we're just going to go the height times B1 plus B2. Okay, so here's B1, here's B2, here's the height right there. Okay, and again, the formula for one of them is one half the height times B1 plus B2. But since we have two of them, we can take off the half part. Okay, so let's just plug it in. So 15.5 goes here, 30 goes here, 42 goes here. Okay, and then uh, we got to add 30 and 42 to get 72. Okay, and then when we multiply those together, we get the total area is 1,116 square feet. All right, now it says this. We're not done, you guys. It says 
carpet costs three dollars a square foot so how much will it cost to carpet in the lobby well if there's this many square feet and it costs that much per square foot how much is going to cost so we're going to multiply this number times this number right here so when we do that um, uh, we're going to get that so I'm going to go ahead and multiply it and we get three thousand three hundred forty eight dollars that's how much it's going to cost them to uh, copy or to carpet that uh, area all right you guys I hope that makes sense and, and take care